in this <coughs> in this hour that we are left today, uh, let me start speaking about forms. Because up to now we can create components, we can display them like we did for the table, we can delete elements and the components, maybe we can find a way to filter components so that, I don't know, just showing the exams uh, with a score greater than 24. Mm -hmm. So we can do all these things up to now. Uh, we cannot yet add elements to a components, for instance, to a table, to a state, and either edit, update existing value inside a component. And for doing these two things mainly, we, we need to rely on forms. Uh, we, if you remember, uh, briefly uh, cover forms in HTML. We briefly cover form there because we didn't use them in HTML, but we are going to use it on React, in React. Mm -hmm. uh, but just a, as a reminder, forms in HTML are made by different elements, input type text, uh, input type date, uh, select mm, for uh, selecting options from um, a list, uh, checkboxes, etc. And in HTML, forms and all these elements with, uh, within form are typically inconsistent. Mm. Uh, I mean, there is different way of handling values, events, et cetera, dependent, depending on the specific elements in the form you are using. And so if it's an input, you can do some things. If it's a checkbox, you can do other things. Mm. Uh, and this is, in HTML, is a consequence of the compatibility they want to have with the history. Mm. But in React, they can, uh, as I told you, with uh, synthetic events, uh, they can abstract this behavior and put it in a more uniform way uh, with exposing uh, a uniform interface via JSX. Mm -hmm. So this happens with events like on click, etc., but also happens in how the field within a form behave. Mm -hmm. So the uh, on change on a ready button is easy to handle as the value in a text area mm -hmm. in React. And then is React that do the work, that does the work that is needed to map these abstract events and this abstract uniform behavior with the current uh, HTML elements that is within, that is behind. Hmm? So for instance, and this is one important things in form in React, the value attribute in React, in a form in React, always holds the current value of the field. So input value, input type text value, something, that something is the current value of that field. Mm? And this apply if the input is text, number, date, etc. For all elements, value is the attributes holding the current value of the field. Uh, the default value exists and holds the default value that was set when the field was created at the beginning. And this apply to all the elements. So not only input that has a value in HTML, but it also happens in with text area, in which value contain the current value, and also with options, where value is the selected element in a drop down menu while in HTML you have selected as an attribute to indicate which is the element that is selected. Here instead you have ID, value, and the name of the element selected. So value is common in all the element. And when you want to change a value in the form, when you want that React to know that you are changing a value in the form by typing, you have to uh, use on change. So a typical form in React will have various fields, and each of these fields this field will probably have always value and on change. Mm. 
Mm? This goes basically in pairs. Mm? On value contains the current element in the field, and on change is what happens when you type, on when you press, when you click on that element. Mm? And on change will update value. So you will typically have value with a current value and on change with a function to update the current value, depending on the type of the field. So if it's an input text, every time you input on the keyboard, you will you want to update value. If it's a drop down menu, where you select an element, you want to update the, the element. And this will also give you a little bit more flexibility since on change will have a callback. So it's a function and where you can also do additional checks if you want, not just passing through uh, things from what you type to the value, but also additional check if you want. And these on change also work for other input, other elements of a form, and not just for the input, like value. Mm? So we typically have value and on change together, always together, when, for every element in a form. Uh, and these on change behave like the on click we have seen before. It's a callback, hmm? which you, you have to do something specifically according to what you, you want to do. It's an on click, you are going to react to a uh, click event. If it's an on change, you're going to react to the change event. If it's an on copy, you're going to react on the copy events from the keyboard. So. Clearly, what you're going to do is different, could be different, but everything is just a function with a callback that is the event object. And inside that, you have even the target, like in HTML, to get the source of the event. Uh, and uh, I just told you before that we have in React these synthetic events that corresponds to DOM events including this value and including this on change. And here there is the list that I showed you before, in which we have also the on change hmm, here. Also the on change hmm, together with the on click. So the, all, all these values or these events are the one available and abstracted in React. And these tips is actually something that we met in the exercise that we just did. When I created the, when I called the delete uh, exam in the, in the button, just by writing delete exam, open parentheses, uh, props.exams.code. So how do you define the function, the event render function for these on click, et cetera, event, uh, the synthetic events? You can define the function as an, as an error function or as a function expression, and most importantly, how do you call it? You don't call it with the parentheses, we already said that. You don't call it without the curly bracket, because otherwise it will not be JavaScript, it will be a string in that case, in this example. Uh, you call it with the curly bracket and without the parentheses. So you pass the reference to the function. You don't want to call the function when the element is is invoked and when you have a um, parameter, you have to use a narrow function inside the callback, hmm? like we did for the onClick. Otherwise, it will happen the same things that happen to us. Hmm? React gives error and show strange things or no things at all, hmm? like it happened before. Because without the callback and with the parentheses, for the function, again, React is executing that function in that moment, and not when the event is triggered, either the onClick, either the onChange, either any events that exist on the synthetic event list. And notice, again, that events are always on something with something with a capital, the first letters, capital letter. So up to now, nothing really strange or complex, just a difference with HTML. We have the same elements in HTML, input, select, etc. Uh, 
with this difference that we have the value and the unchanged for each of them and they are uniform. But there is one more thing that each form element in React is stateful. They all the value, the value that you put in value. Hmm? So they need a state. Hmm? So if you have a form with values, uh, each of these values will have a state associated. A state defined with use state. Because it's the way in which they work. They are stateful. They hold the value in the value field. That value is changed through the on-change callback. But that value needs to be saved somewhere in a state. So what happens is that the form has, uh, in practice, the form has a series of state, one, typically one for each input element or for each element of the form which field of the form that store the value of the elements and store the update value of the elements through the on change property. So they are designed in this way in React. Every form element is stateful. Every form elements need to have a state behind to work properly. And these are used to render actually the components. So as is written here, to correctly render the components in the virtual DOM that React is using, React needs to know which value must be set in the fields that you have. So you, you're asking for a name, which field should I display on that name? And on every change, on that on change, React must be notified to get the new value and update the state. So every time you have a, a form, you have a three ingredients, always three ingredients, a state or more than one. And for each, for each field of the form, a value and one cha an on change. These are three things that go together with forms. At least with forms that are called controlled. So all these that I said to you up to now is for controlled components. So when a component holds in its state the value to be shown in the form element. And it's the preferred way, it's the React way. Having a form entirely done in React with synthetic events, with state, you need to remember to use a state, to have value, to have unchange, but everything done is handled smoothly in React. You can also have, if you want, but clearly it's preferred to avoid this option, you can also have uncontrolled components. So mixing React with forms in HTML. This sometimes is needed when you have a legacy code or when you have components that are read-only or components that maybe are not ready yet for React or uh, cannot be executed as you need in React. For instance, file selection. File selection could be tricky even in React. So in that case, you have standard HTML components, elements in a form. So making things a bit more complex. But overall, when possible, either with the components defined by React, either with components defined by others, is always better and preferable to use control components, hmm? where you have value on change to update the value and a state to uh, have the element of the, the field of the form in a stateful format, as React expects. Hmm? So how it works, a uh, field inside a uh, a form in a controlled way. Uh, you have the state, as you have before, x and set x, initialized to an empty string. Uh, React, as you know, render the form element with value x and on change, change x. Uh, the, form uh, the form element will display x as a value on the page. 
when you have the on-change event, you type something in the form, in the label, you delete something, etc. you can, the on-change is triggered, the handler within the on-change is called, that's change x, and that change x will call set x. That is the way to change the state of x, that is the one that is in the value. So actually you are changing the content of value while you type something. And you, what, what are you going to change? You are going to get the value that the user, the person is typing, if it's uh, an input text, from the input text that the person is using. Mm -hmm. So event.target will get the target, the source element of the event mm -hmm. where the person is writing in an input text field, for instance, and value will get the actual value that the person is using is writing. Hmm? So in this case, you have, let's say, the name field hmm, that appears empty because an empty string. Then you type your name. When you type your name, hmm, this change x is called, and it will get the value, the, na the name that you are typing, and from the field you are using in the browser, and that will update the state that will display on screen what you are typing. So you will not see all of this. This is how React works and, and what you need to have the behavior working in this way. So you will have the field name and you write your name and instantly the name will appear letter by letter. But to have this name appear the letter by letter what you need to do is all this loop. Where you type a letter, the change x is called, that updates the value, that render the components with a new letter. And then you type another letter, another round, until you compile the full name, and then you move to another field, and, that, and the value in that field will store in the state your uh, name, in that case. And so the same thing happened with another state, with another set, x, set y, for another field. Mm -hmm. So setting values plus and change, again, with a state makes a component fully controlled. Mm -hmm. That is the way that we, we would like to, to have. Mm -hmm. So here, there is an example, mm -hmm. a, a more complete example. Um, and always remember that when you update the state, our render is, is triggered. So even when you type a letter, your React is over rendering. But you don't notice that. Remember also this, you don't notice that because the React is acting on the virtual DOM. And then at a certain point, it will send updates in bulk to the DOM. And that is the one that the browser understand and, and show you. So this performance gain is getting the, by this translation between the virtual DOM and the actual DOM content. Mm -hmm. And here you see a, a full example of a form. Mm -hmm. So we have a form. The form needs to be submitted somewhere. And you have the event, uniform, synthesize event on submit that we call a function, a callback that is defined somewhere else. Uh, then you have a label, name, an input text, and you see this is the input, the same input you write in HTML, just in, in the form of a React element, and you will have value and, and unchange, and the state. Value is the state, name, and unchange is end of change. This end of change will just do, and often will do something like this, we'll just call the set of the specific state associated to that element with the value that is inserted in the browser, essentially. Hmm? So that that state is updated accordingly here, so that the name is updated, and so that this input here will show the things that you are typing. When you, um, press this sort of button here, hmm? uh, 
uh, that is type submit. The form is submitted through this on submit handler event. And this will do just two things in, in this case. One will put in the console.log the name of the state that is submitted. Very simple things. And the other one that could also go uh, before is prevent the fold. Do you remember why we need prevent the fold? Absolutely not. Yes, because the submit event is, all, all the events are, are already implemented. Um, the submit event has a specific behavior, clearly, uh, that is submitting the form to a new page, to a new address. Mm -hmm. And so we need to prevent the default behavior that is change, and change page. Mm -hmm. We don't want to change page. We have a single page application. We, we don't want to change page. Mm -hmm. And so the default behavior is opening a new page to a new address that should, should have been described in the form. But since we are working with single page application, either in React or in other framework, or even JavaScript, in plain JavaScript, we want to prevent the default behavior to sending this information to another page, to another address, because we don't have another page, another address, and handling it on our own. So we need to prevent the default behavior that the form has, the submit event as so specific and so different from the, the behavior that we, we have and intercept the behavior to do what we want. In, in this case, what we want is nothing, just print on the console, but it's not really a submission. But a, a thing that we can maybe want to do is to change, uh, let's think about to, the, to our exam example, to change the state of the exam, to add a new exam, to update an exam, to write this data to a database, so we want to do some operation after this line here, not written here. But we always need with form to write event dot prevent the fold to avoid, as he was saying, the default behavior of the form. And this is so different and so incompatible with what we are going to do, what we are doing in JavaScript that needs to be prevented. Hmm? Uh, but also the click has a default behavior that is opening a link but we typically don't want to prevent this behavior because it's the, the expected behavior. You click somewhere and you open uh, something, a link, not a click. Okay, here there is also an example with uncontrolled components, but we uh, basically don't, we're not going to use it and it's not recommended, so try to avoid it. in any way. So, as I told you, the on submit event is generated by the form element. Always call event prevent default to avoid the submission and reloading the page. That is the other things. The submission of form open an address that could be also the same page, but we'll also, if it's the same page, we reload the page from scratch. So React will be rebuild the entire application from scratch like pressing refresh to the browser. Um, and it's always a good idea, and you can spend hours doing that, those things, but it's always a good idea to have at least some sort of validation of the data, of the form before proceeding. So check the state variables that came uh, to see if they contain valid information to see if they contain uh, coherent information, updated information. Mm -hmm. and you can do it manually if variable is not empty, mm -hmm. et cetera, or with validators in JavaScript that already have some uh, features to that. Mm -hmm. And we will meet again validation when we submit the form to a server, because also the server will need to validate the information they receive before storing in a database. Mm -hmm. 
So for instance, in the case of our exam, one kind of validation that we would like to do is for instance that we don't add an exam that is already registered or a course that is not in our career or um, a score that is lower than 18 or greater than 31 if we want to count the load in that way. There are some sort of validation that we would like to do. And some of this validation could be done at the level of the React element with minimum, maximum, et cetera. Others, smarter, let's say, validation needs to be done in code. So always a good idea to validate, but beware that validation is needed, but to cover all the possible cases, you would spend hours in just validating. So at least in this course, try to have a balanced approach to validation. Validate the most important things. Prevent bad behaviors so that you don't have to validate because you prevent those to happen. And so for instance, if we want to have only the courses in our um, career for an exam, we can validate that. We can have a form in which the person insert the name of the course and then check, oh, this is in a list somewhere. Yes, we can do that. But we can also provide the courses, only the courses without an exam in our career from a drop down menu so that you can select, only select a valid course and you don't have validate after because you prevent the error, any possible error, by just giving the valid option that a person can have. So instead of having a free text field, you have a constraint list with just the elements that you have. So this will, for instance, prevent validation. Prevent the need of validation because you prevent any kind of error before. Uh, we are going to use control, exp uh, control components for forms, but um, there is alternatives. So uncontrolled components are problematic. Try to avoid them. Control components work well, but are quite tedious because for every single input or element, you have to write a state, a value, an on change every single time. So if you have 10 fields in the form, you will have probably 10 states, 10 values, and 10 on change. Almost identical line after line. Uh, and this is, you know, the right way. Uh, but to avoid this and other problem, uh, there exist uh, external library. And so like we are using Bootstrap for uh, the CSS and the layout, uh, there exist libraries also for forms. And one of these widely used in React is this formic. Then again, we are going to use control experiment also in the exercise, but this is something that at least you, you can know that exist so that if you want to use it in the future, it's fine. Uh, Formix is a way to handle forms uh, easier than control component. And here there is the link in the slides. And it's something that hides something from you. You don't have the full control that you have with control components because the library is doing something on your behalf like every library or every framework. Uh, but in the case of Formic, not too much. Mm. Uh, so keep things quite organized without hiding. The form state is local, but it's handled by the library, includes already validation. Uh, keep track of the fields that were visited already. It has some uh, features to handle more easily and more automatic form submission, so it has some advantages and some helps for handling form, especially complex form. Mm, maybe not just forms with three fields, like the one that we are going to have in the exam um, example. Maybe if you have bigger fields with input text or with uploading images, something more complex, a solution like that will help a lot, you as developer, mm, to create something 
that works easier without remembering every time to do all the things manually. So um, one note on handling arrays in state. Uh, that is mostly things that are mostly triggered by forms uh, because they are add, updating, and delete things. We already see the delete. Um, we didn't see the add. So the suggested way to add things to an existing state is either these two. Remember that you have to provide a new state. So if you have an array and you want to add an element to that array, you cannot use push. Whatever is it dot push, exams dot push. Because push doesn't return the new array. Returns the number of elements that is not what you want to store in the state. So depending on whether you, where you want to, to add things, you can either in the callback inside the set x where x is a state, you can either write all the list dot concat new item and concat would create a new array with everything from the old list and with the new item in concatenation. Or you can use the spread operator. Hmm? New item, comma, spread operator, old list, old state, or vice versa. Spread operator, old list, comma, new item, if you want to append in the end. Hmm? Concat will always add in the end. Uh, with a spread operator, you can choose before or after by changing the way. But the important things is to create a new array with state. Maybe starting from the existing one, but without manipulating the existing one, and create a new one with contact, with the spread operator, not with push, and not with other operation that will not give you a new array. So functional methods in these, most of the functional methods are good because they already give you a new array for that. Okay. Now, let's try to add a form here. And then next time, we are going to see how to update the element in a state through a form. Mm -hmm. So getting the current information and update that. So where are we going to add a form? Mm -hmm. We can add it here in the bottom of this page. Maybe we can have a button here that is called add, and when we press the button, the form appear, and then after the form is submitted, the form disappear, something like that. But in the end, it will be in one component here, after the table. Hmm? And everything else will not change. where are we going to create the form? So for instance, we can create the form here uh, after um, uh, after exam table. For instance, we can also create it in another file, it's not a problem. But for instance, let's create here the, the form. Mm -hmm. And we can call it exam form. And then we are going to see what to add. So first of all, why it gave me an error? Mm -hmm. 
because there is no one root, perfect, anymore. So we need to add a single root and close it after example. Good. And now we need to create exam form. So let's create it in the bottom. Function, exam form. And here we have the exam form function. Okay, before writing the form, let's do the same things we did for the delete. We, when the form is done, it's completed, we need to, when we press something here, we need to add something in the state that is in app.js. Mm? So similarly, what happened with the delete. So what we can do, what we have to do. Yeah, we don't need the exams, but we need to, the callback function, we need to do a similar things that we did for delete, right? For adding. We fill the form with the course name, the code, everything, and then we press add, and that will need to update the table. And to update the table, we need to update the state. And to update the state, and it is in app.js, we need to call something from one of the exam components back to where the state is like we did for delete. So we have delete in the top level and we pass through and, and up to the button and here we need to do the same thing. So here we need a const add exam that takes an exam and what can do this? exams do we need a callback or not yes and then let's call it all the exams we need to add them Concat or we can do the spread operator like all the exam, exam. And then we need to pass this to exam score. We need to do the same things, more or less the same things we did for delete. We need to pass the information and fill the place we need that. So add exam, uh, it's called add exam. So exam score, we receive that, we are going to pass it to exam table, props.add exam. Here we have props, and here in the exam form is where we need that at exam. Here is where we are going to, to need that. So let's copy here 
again. And then we will see if it's enough or not. So here we need the exam form. Right? So let's style the form with bootstrap. React bootstrap. Components. we see that forms are defined in this way in React Bootstrap. We have form, and then we have a form group that is the container for the label and the element. So a form group is just the container. They could be styled, so it could be in one column, in multiple column, so you can have a form horizontally, vertically, etc. And inside the form group, we have the label, in this case, email address, and then you have a form control, that is the input, type email with a placeholder, and then you have a format of text that is just a text visible on screen, not an input element. Then you call the form group, and then you have another form group with a label, with a control, from the control that even in this case is an input because type password. It has a placeholder. And then you have another form group with a form of check that in this case is a checkbox. But you see the pattern here. So you have a form. In the end, you have a button, probably, uh, of type submit. And for each field in the form, you have form.group, the label, and the element that you want to add. If it's, a if it's an input of any kind, text, password, date, whatever, it's form.control. If it's something else, it's form.check, for instance, for the checkbox. Hmm? So you see, here, form control, the form control components directly render the input. Mm -hmm. So the React elements that represent the input in HTML that will be then displayed as an input element on screen. And then you have option, disable form. Um, if you want to disable field, you have all the option that you, you can imagine. And also the list of form control. Mm -hmm. uh, for control just input, checks, you can have the checks, checkboxes, you can have switches in form of check, you can do those in line, with or without label, etc. Mm -hmm. So a lot of options to render the form as you prefer. Mm -hmm. So let's try to create here a form for adding an exam. <laughs> So what we need to, to write, let's render the form first of all, before thinking about value and change, everything else. Let's just render the form, how it should appear on screen. What we need to write here. Return, because it's a component. Return form. Hmm? We said that in Bootstrap it's just form. We need to import that, but we already have a lot of things from Bootstrap. We just need to add form in the import. Okay. Then we said that the form has a form group. 
form.group. And since we imported form, we already have form.group, form.checks, form.control, everything that stem from form. Inside dot form dot group, so which are the information we need to ask in the form for adding an exam? The code, the name, the score, the date, and stop it. Okay, the code. Hmm? So form dot label, and clearly this could be done also without bootstrap styling, but instead of writing uh, uh, form dot label, you're going to write label. And instead of writing form dot control, you're going to write input. And instead of form dot group, you can write div if you want to put things together. Uh, form dot label, and the label is code. Or course code. That's the label that is displayed on screen. And then form.control. What are we going to write in form.control? Type. Which type? Text. <laughs> because a code is something uh, mixed numbers and letters, seven letter typically, with the last two that, that change according to the degree. So OV is for the master degree in computer engineering, but if a course is offered ma multiple degrees, the first five letters are the same, and the last two are one that change. So if this course is offered also to, I don't know, data science, uh, it will be something OV, and then it's the same things OM, or whatever it is, hmm? but seven letter at most. Five if we avoid the distinction between degrees. Hmm? But this is text, for sure. Uh, and let's keep everything else for now the value, et, et cetera. Just let's create this form. Then what we need? We have the course code. Now, we need exactly the same thing with name. So let's copy and paste this. But instead of code is name, so actually probably it's better course name or course code, and it will be text, also in this case. Then, code name score. It will be text. What will be? Number. And then we need the date. And the type for date is uh, date. Exactly. And then we, we don't have any other field, the code, the name, the score, and the date, and we need a button, yeah. Uh, that we can say variant uh, success. Um, and type uh, submit. And we call it save, submit, add, whatever. So if we save this and we run this, we should at least see the form. Sorry, 
and that's all. If I change one thing, I'm not here. So we just have the form, just there in the page, without control, without anything. But we have the label, we have the fields. This is a number, so if I am trying to write a letter, but it doesn't, uh, and we can increase it, decrease it because it's a number, and this is a date. Hmm? With the calendar, day, month here in this format. So we just added the form here. Next step. Let's make this a controlled component. So what do we need to make this a controlled component? The three things that we need, the state, then, on change. One triple for each element in the form. So one for code, one for name, one for score, one for date. We just have four, so we just need four. So const, uh, the first one is code, set code, equal use state, And we can, I don't know, initialize it as an empty string. The code is a text. Then we need uh, the name, so course, set course. Same thing as before. Then the score. And the score could be initialized to 30 because it's the most frequent score that we get. No? And, and then we have date. And we can initialize date to what if we want. What is today? DJS. And we clearly also need to import DJS. So let me stop this. Okay. And we have our states. Now, let's start with code. What we need to write here? What we need to write here? Before one change, let's write the other. Value. And which is the value? Code. Code written in this way? No. With a curly brace, yes. Because it's still the variable. It's the state. And then on change. And the on change is going to be very easy. So let's 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 not write the on change for a moment, and let's see what happens. Hmm? So let me start it again. So here we have seen here that we don't we we just started to create to fix code to make it a control component, right? So course name is the original one. And so if I type something, uh, 
it works. I'm typing in course code now. We don't see any change. If I type something here, it works. So why this is not working? Because we are starting to make this control, and what happens here is the value is the value and that is taken from the state and which is the initial value that we set in the code. An empty string. An empty string. So here we, we see an empty string. And what happens when we change the empty string in something else? Nothing, because we didn't declare the unchange. So whatever we do in this field is totally ignored. Because it's the event on change is not handled by React. Mm? So we need to explicitly handle that. Otherwise, this happens. We, we cannot change things in a form. Mm? So the change will be actually very, very similar to all of them. It will be a narrow function with the event mm? uh, that will be passed to the to set the state. So set code of what? Of event dot target dot value. So the value that the person is typing in this case because it's a text inside the input field associated to this. And this will be the same for the others, with the difference that instead of having set code, we will have set course, and then set date, and then set score. But it will be the same. But we have this triple, state, value, on change. And if we are missing one of them, the form is not behaving correctly, as we have seen now, without the on change. So now, if we, I'm going here, I'm going to refresh the page too, just to be sure. I can still type in course name as before, but now I can also type in course code without any problem. And these things that I wrote is actually in the state, in the code state variable that we have in the code. And if I add a letter, the new version is in the state. So we can do the same thing for the other. So value here is a course and on change it will be the same but instead of set code, set course. Same thing for score. and set score and same thing for date so if we want we could also have some something different here so for instance we can say that whatever the user is typing in the code, since the code is also cap is always capital letter, we're going to put it a capital letter before putting in the state, because it's a function. We can do whatever we want if it's reasonable in a function. Hmm? So in that case, the user can write a small letter. We can, for instance, automatically put it all capital, since the code is capital. Hmm? Or we can do other checks if we want there before updating the state. But 90% of the time, 99% of the time, it will just be set from the, the source of the event. Hmm? So now if we refresh this and we try, hmm, we see that we can enter here, the course is sturdy, 
because it was initialized and the date is, is not visible here on Chrome, the current date, but opening this will show us the date of today. Mm -hmm. So it's set to the current date. Uh, actually, wait. Um, for the date, we need to format it, uh, otherwise it's not visible, sorry. Because the input ac expect a date in the format here, 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 minus month, month, minus day, day. It's the input field that wait that number. And then it renders based on the localization of the computer, but it expect date in that, in that way. So here we have to write format and format it in month, month, day, day. And that input field will give you a date in that format automatically by default. So here you see, if we refresh, we see the current date. It wasn't visible because it was in the wrong format. Because the AJS not only has the date, but also has the, the hour, the minutes, the seconds, the time zone information, etc. So too much information for the date field here. Because it's just for the date not for the hours of other things. Okay. So what we can do now, not doing the submit of the form, because it will be uh, too long to, to spend the, last, the fi next five minutes on that. Uh, we can do, uh, for instance, some uh, um, we can do this. We can so since this is not very nice, right? The table with the form. Uh, we can do a two-step process. We can have a but the form not visible. We can have a button add. When we press the button, we show the form. When we press save or cancel, we can also have a cancel button. We hide the form and we will show the add button. Mm -hmm. So how we're going to do that? We need a new component that is the, which is the components we need to do this operation? The, the add button, yes. Absolutely, we need the button, we need a new component, just the button to be put instead of the form. Mm -hmm. So here, when we create the button, the, the form, we need to have the button too. Mm -hmm. So button, uh, variant uh, success, and add as the text mm -hmm. inside the button. And now we have both. We have both the form and the button. It's not something that we, we want. Oh, let's remove the variant from the submit so that it's another color. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have both. We don't have, we don't want to have both. What we can do to show either the add or the form. Do you? <laughs> we can have a state on the on the on the web. Yeah, we can have a state on the exam table. Why not? I, I was in the, not in the exam table. Yes, we can have a state here. Uh, they can we call it uh, show form. So it's not a state to contain data. It's a state to contain behavior mm, in a way. Show form, a set to show form. And we can put it a false so that when 
the table is rendered, the form is not visible, is not shown, show form, show uh, form is false. And then, let me stop this. And then here, we can do this thing that is quite um, peculiar in uh, uh, React, that is saying show form, question mark, exam form, colon, button. So if show form is true, render the component. Otherwise, it's false, render the button. It's the same uh, operator that we have in code. Variable, question mark, something, if it's true, colon, what happens if it's false? But in, the ca in this case, what happens is we add a component to the page, to the rendering of the page. Otherwise, it's not present. So if we run this, we don't see the form anymore because show form is false. If we press this, nothing happened in this moment. What do we need to do when we press add? Sorry? We need to update the state. We need to call set state. We on click set state true. And in this case, we'll re render the components and we show the form instead of the button. Mm -hmm. So we, we probably have time to do this now. On click. Arrow function uh, set show form. You see, when I click the button, I open the form and the button disappear. And now we need to do the same things with the save or the cancel button. When we press this button, we need to put uh, show form to false. And so in this case, we're using the components and the state just for presentation purposes, not for storing actual data in the exam form, okay? So we, we are going to continue this after the, the, the Easter vacation. Uh, and, and yes, after also the 25, I think, because it's, it's another Tuesday. Uh, the next big lab, part B, will be after the Easter vacation on Thursday and will be online soonish. It's needed in one week for, for, in a week, a few days, in 10 days from now, but we are preparing it. Uh, if you have any question, as always, write on Slack. Otherwise, have a nice vacation and see you uh, towards the end of the month.